Welcome everyone, in this video we will derive the Wheatstone Bridge formula. Now, you might be asking, what is a Wheatstone Bridge? Let me first write it for you. So, we are interested in Wheatstone Bridge. There are like kind of different ways of drawing a Wheatstone Bridge circuit, but the main idea is the same, as far as I know. And I will be drawing the var variation that I am more familiar with, more comfortable with. So let's say that we have four resistors and they will be connected in this manner. Let's say that we have R1, okay, R2, we have R3, and let's say that here we have another resistor, which we call Rx, because we in fact don't know the resistance value of this resistor, Rx. And our whole goal in this circuit, in this Wheatstone bridge, is to figure out the resistance value of this, if we know the resistance of all other three uh, resistors, okay? And this, of course, continues. Maybe there is a battery here. We don't know, and we don't care. But there will be a current coming through, okay? We know that. And there is a wire connecting these two points. We will put an, like a galvanometer, something that can measure the current. Okay, let's say A. So this will be measuring the current in amperes. Now, our condition for a Wheatstone bridge is that this ammeter shows zero current. Okay. We want the, let's call this the central wire, okay? We want the central wire to have zero current passing through it. And you might say, I mean, how do we achieve this? Like, if I were to take four resistors and connect them in this manner, I probably would not end up with zero amperes in this wire. And that's actually, in pra practice, you're absolutely right. So, in practice... These three resistors that we know the resistance of, one of these would be a rheostat. Now, a rheostat means that you can adjust the resistance value. So, what you would do is, perhaps you have R1, and you are able to change the resistance of this rheostat. You will maybe slightly increase it, decrease it, and e with each change that you make, you will be keeping an, an eye on the ammeter here. And you will say, okay, it is starting to decrease, so I should maybe increase the rheostat more or decrease the rheostat, uh, the resistance. And so when it hits the zero, you stop adjusting the rheostat and you, uh, you continue with the resistance value that you finally arrived at, okay? So let's say that for our theoretical calculation, we arrived at that uh, at that point where we adjusted the rheostat and we saw zero current in the central wire so now we stopped okay and what does this mean well let's say that there is a current i1 flowing in this part and there is current i2 flowing notice that since there is no current here i1 will also flow through r2 and i2 will flow through rx okay so what can we see? We also see that this point and this point have the same electric potential. Otherwise, there would be a voltage and there would be current, right? There would be a current flow. But since they have the same voltage, there won't be any current flowing. So we can say that the voltage here is equal to the voltage here. And what is the formula for voltage? It is Ohm's law, V equals IR. So I'm writing that. We have I1, R1 equaling I2, R3. We also see that the voltage across here and across this resistor, they are also the same. Because they are connecting points that have, they have, that have the same potential. So what I'm saying is, as we discussed, this and this have the same potential. And of course they all connect here. So the potential difference, the voltage will be the same in both directions. 
Which means we can also say I1 R2 equals I2 Rx, right? And so if we were to divide through like this, so what I'm saying is I want to basically divide I1 R1 by I1 R2, right? I can make this division. And that will be equal to, of course, I2 R3 divided by I2. Uh, I to Rx. And so the current will be cancelled. That's very nice. We see then R1 Rx equals R2 R3. And remember we are trying to solve for Rx. So Rx is going to be R2 R3 over R1. And that's the final result for our Wheatstone Bridge formula to recap we use this kind of a circuit to be able to determine an unknown resistance now of course as far as i heard it has other applications as well further applications which we can discuss in future videos hopefully but if you want that i will need to do some further research i need to admit because i only know this part theoretically i don't really know the practical uses of wisdom bridge but why not I can learn it. I, of course I can learn it. If you guys want, we can also discuss the practical uses of this bridge besides uh, finding the resistance of a resistor, okay? Because there are more practical uses of this as far as I heard. Anyways, this is it for this video. If you have any questions, please add them in the comment section. And if you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to subscribe. And I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.